what I'm going to do is uh, firstly introduce you know, who JLL are and what you know we're doing with Facebook. Um, so uh, JLL is a, a global real estate firm. We have got offices in uh, different territories around the world and we deal with corporate clients to manage real estate. So when we say corporate clients, we mean uh, customers like um, you know, Intel, Hewlett Packard, uh, Facebook, and we will manage their buildings in different ways and projects. And, and this part is about facility management. So what we did was uh, we actually put together a little sort of summary of what we do in the IFM area of, um, of JLL. And the triangle really shows all of what facility management is um, within the, uh, the, the areas here in red is, I'm going to use my pointer. These are the kind of JLL employee groups. So we've got uh, within facility management, we've got managing finances, managing suppliers, managing um, sourcing, and also managing your health and safety. So it's very much of uh, providing our services safely as opposed to providing a safety service. So all these services at the bottom would typically be um, outsourced. So mechanical and electrical, plumbing, UPS, we would use outsourced suppliers. And over here again, cleaning on the soft service side, we'd use suppliers. So snow removal, reception, pest control. Uh, and what we really do in JLL is with, uh, with Facebook is we try to provide a really great service. We provide a way to reduce costs and we also manage risks. So it's the three things. We provide service, provide cost uh, uh, management, and then manage their risks. But when you think about different customers that JLL have, uh, we'll have manufacturing like Intel and HP, and we'll also have technology uh, clients like Facebook, where they've got mottos like break things, move fast, poke someone, you know, and trying to get them to sort of think about managing in an organized way is um, is, is, is different. And so what we did was we tried to enter an award, which we actually entered a JLL's, JLL's uh, headquarters in London, and we entered the British Safety Council Awards. Um, we've got 22 sites in Europe, Middle East, Africa for Facebook we manage across 14 countries. We entered the award for a bunch of reasons. Um, a few are listed here. So again, uh, to show good practices, to recognize uh, ourselves and also the customers good work and also really to reward the staff that have put all the effort in for this. Um, a lot of the things that I've been trying to push the employees have really supported it. To get into the award we had to have uh, no fatalities, no enforcement activity with uh, any of the territories around Europe, Middle East and um, we also had to have zero convictions um, and it, we had a range of best practices which we had to demonstrate to win the award. So I guess when Carolyn asked me to come here, it was more about the next part. It was sort of what are these best practices? What are we doing? So first one is we have a sort of really strong set of values. Uh, three pillars of our values are listed here. First one is our standards. So this is our standards on the left side. So these are... Um, really a belief that JL have got a set of conditions. We've got rules and requirements, like we call them cardinal rules. So our top 10 safety uh, requirements. We've got procedures, we've got a whole range of tools. So these are our standards and guidance. Central pillar, this is a really a belief around having a goal zero or zero accidents. So a culture where we believe accidents are reportable, are, are preventable and that we're all responsible. So we really try to provide that responsibility and leadership through every layer of the, of the FM operations. And then on the left, oh sorry, on the right, you've got uh, the third pillar, which is around learning. If we do have an event, if something does happen, and unfortunately that does happen from time to time, we have this continual improvement where we'll share the learnings, we'll share that lesson to help other sites and other customer accounts uh, prevent recurrence. So what are we doing? What are these sort of 
best practices we've got? What are the criteria that the award body were looking for? First was, how do you manage risks? So we have a template, like most of you guys will have, with a way to pick up what are the typical kind of hazards in a building. And then we'll assess that and using a typical model of a, a typical approach. And so we had to provide evidence of all this for the award. Um, the next one we had to look at was sort of what are our sort of top 10 rules, which are cardinal rules of safety. And so these are, again, all fatality related. So a lot of these things are, as the motto suggests, safety first. We're looking at things like confined spaces. Do we have uh, clear guidance on that? A rule on work at heights, electrical safety, you know, all the, the key fatality prevention programs. So we've got these um, as part of employee induction. We have these with uh, shared with our supplier groups as part of their induction, um, and then a refresher every year for uh, for individuals as part of their performance appraisal. They have to have done a refresher on this. So it's our top ten rules of safety. Another area we had to demonstrate was a big area. Uh, and that's how we manage suppliers safely. And so we have this sort of six step process. Uh, starting on the left is a pre qual, sort of the induction, uh, sorry, no, the pre qual here where we have a selection. And this part's really about verification of insurance. Have our suppliers got the right certifications? Have they got uh, the right policies? And then once they're assessed, we move to step two, which is appointment. And critically, we insert into our contracts with suppliers key safety requirements. So they may be coming from our customer through JLL down to our suppliers, which we will then cascade. Step three is induction. This could be when they finally get to site or they're almost at site. We're going to share with them a sort of a safety handbook and requirements of what we expect them to do in terms of behavior uh, on site. And only is step four was when they actually start to do any work. So there's three steps previous. And <clears throat> again, we think of what's happening when, in, in the world of Facebook and some technology companies where there's, there's suppliers coming in for all sorts of events and there's all sorts of it's a new, some new thing happening. And we're trying to control, put these controls in so that there is a level of comfort, level of uh, due diligence. So this step for could involve also permit to work, depending on the activities. Then step five is when they actually start. So this is where we start the work and we then adopt a level of supervision. Again, we would, having a dispersed portfolio, 22 sites, 14 countries, how we do that is we have to train our staff very well to manage works, to manage suppliers, to identify what permits are. We've got a whole range of tools to do that. Sixth step and pretty important one is sort of performance. How are they doing? You know, did they uh, meet all the requirements that we told them in the earlier steps? And then that's a feedback route to the very start. So if, if there was any issues, if there is any uh, performance issues, that's fed back and then we can consider that supplier or otherwise in the other parts of the business. So it could be um, for poor suppliers, we have a range of options ranging from Working with them is our first and foremost uh, ambition. Work together as a vendor partner, range into termination. You know, so a lot, lot of other steps in between there, like um, uh, supporting them and, and helping them along. But yeah, we ultimately could it range uh, termination. So another area we uh, we actually started this a few a few years ago was. Leading back to what Brian was referring to about engagement is looking at staff attitudes. And this is a safety climate survey. We, we run this um, now annually, split into eight distinct areas. And what we're doing with this is actually getting our employees to complete this and then gauging our performance year on year. Same questions so we can benchmark our, our performance and how we've improved. Clearly, what we found was that procedures was an area for improvement. And so what we've done with that is we've, uh, we've, re we've listened, we've got the feedback from the survey to all employees, we then built focus groups. Okay, so focus groups helped us to sort of tease out a bit more information about what exactly in relation to procedures was the issues. Was it access, was it reading them, was it translations? And all these areas are then formed into new objectives for the next year. 
generally, though, I'd say we did really well. There was a lot, there was a lot of high uh, favorable responses. And it's really important that we do this because safety professionals or environmental professionals can look at something in, in one view, but if we don't ask the, the, the staff, the employees, what their view is, like Brian's previously mentioned, how do we really know? You know, so, okay, so, another area then we had to demonstrate was this platform. And so what we've got is a range of different online tools, which are up here um, in different icon buttons, and Facebook are very technology focused, so this is, um, you know, really realigned to what, how they operate. So things like our statistics, our policies, our procedures guides, risk assessment templates, tracking of actions from audits, and then a whole range of different knowledge center information, so lessons learned, statistics. It's organized, it's available, and a lot of these things weren't actually in place prior to, um, in the same format, prior to the Safety Climate Survey. So again, the, the award we won, we had the evidence this, we had to show a lot of these different sources of information. How do we share information? How do we um, set objectives? How do we um, write, you know, write the right level of policies? And then I guess the final part is that we, uh, asked, we were asked to uh, demonstrate was how we share. And so that goes back to the, kind of the third pillar that we looked at earlier where we we have got events, we can share them and learn from that. So this is just one type, but we've got many, many of these. Um, one of the, you know, we, we work in often uh, territories that are remote to this, what happened in Islamabad, um, basically a car accident. And there's a range of different controls we should be putting in place for employees to keep them safe whilst traveling. And I guess, you know, this is one example. We, we try to look at what happened and then look at the bottom here for sort of you know, root causes and emergency numbers and escalation. So just an example, but really, you know, these are all the kind of examples that they were looking for. What also uh, was maybe useful was that JLL were awarded, it was actually last year in 2017, the 18,001, and obviously we'll push this towards uh, 45,001 moving forward. And this obviously was, again, part of the evidence submission for this award. So. So in a nutshell, that's the kind of the best practices we had to um, introduce and share.